Now we've skipped a section, not just one section, several sections. This is section 5.10. The ones in between, you can read them if you want to, but I'm not going to lecture on them and you won't be tested on them at all. So we do need to talk about ionic charge. The periodic table can help us to predict the ionic charges of the main group elements. And uh, one way to think about that is it's based on how far the group that that element is in is from the noble gases. Um, and so here's where I have another chemistry land analogy. So in chemistry land, the noble gases are like the in crowd, the cool kids in high school, right? Everybody wanted to be like the cool kids. And so they all dressed alike, you know, and they tried to, you know, act the same way and everything. So much for individuality, right? So electrons are on the outside of atoms. They're outside the nucleus. And so I see atom electrons as being a bit like the clothing, the hairstyle, the makeup of an atom. You can change that part about yourself, right? You can change your clothes and dress up like someone else, but you don't become that other person. Atoms can arrange their electrons by losing or gaining electrons so that they have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. And there's a very complicated reason why they want to do that, but I don't think you really want to hear that long explanation. So we're just going to think about them wanting to be like the noble gases because the noble gases are cool. So each step that they, have to, that they have to take to get to a noble gas is one unit of charge. Um, they're trying to get the same number of electrons as the noble gases. Metals lose electrons and become cations, and the nonmetals gain electrons and become anions. We talked about those words before, cation and anion. No? Okay. So these, these words are important. A cation has a positive charge. How many of you like cats? Almost all the cat people are sitting down here. I like cats. I have positive feelings for cats. Cat ions are positive. So that, that's what works for me. If you hate cats, you've got to come up with something else, right? <laughs> cat ions are positive. Anions are negative. Now, both of those words end with ion, right? So that's the same in both. But look, anion has an extra N. Anions are negative. Cat ions are positive. Anions are negative. Those are, it's important to understand those terms. So non-metals, mm, non-metals, anions. Non-metals become negative ions. Metals do the other. I see the metals as being masculine and the non-metals as being feminine. And so in a lot of ways, you know, if a guy is going to do one thing, the woman's going to do the other, right? That's how the metals and non-metals are. The non-metals become negative. Okay, fine, then the metals are going to become positive. Now, of course, that's not the reason behind it all, but if it helps you remember, right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, so let's look at the periodic table and see how this works. So here in red, those are the elements that all the other elements want to be like. So let's look at fluorine. How many electrons does a fluorine atom have? Maybe we should start with how many protons does a fluorine atom have? Nine. Nine, because that's the number above fluorine on the periodic table, right? They're not listed on this one. That's the atomic number. Atoms are neutral. They have equal numbers of protons and electrons. So here's fluorine. He's got nine protons. Protons are like your personality or your soul. You can't change who you are, but you can change what you look like. So fluorine cannot change the number of atoms but she can change her number of electrons. So if fluorine gains one electron, she'll have 10 electrons, just like neon does. She'll like, hey, I'm cool now. I look like neon. Yay. Right? But what happens to the charge then? She still has nine protons. Now she has 10 electrons. There's an extra negative charge. Fluorine forms a minus one ion, an anion. And her sisters, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, do the same thing. 
They want to gain one electron so they look like that noble gas. It really has to do with energy and orbitals and stability and stuff, but we don't want to hear about that. Well, what about oxygen? Oxygen has to gain two electrons. If she gains one electron, she looks like fluorine is better, but they're not going to stop there. Gain one more electron to look like neon. That means that oxygen will have a negative two charge. You see how that works? Sulfur and selenium are sisters of oxygen. They're in the same family, right? And so they're also going to form negative two ions. Another way to do this is to pretend you're playing a board game. And this is the game board, right? And this is where you start. Why you start on the far right side, I haven't come up with a reason for that, but just we do. So you start here, and you want to know the charge on nitrogen. How many squares do you have to go backwards? Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Nitrogen has a minus 3 charge. How about selenium? Well, you start here. Minus 1, minus 2. Counting back from the noble gases. That's another way to remember those. You need to be able to predict the charges of these nonmetal ions. It's in the periodic table. It's a nice pattern. You just have to remember it. Any questions about the nonmetals? And then there's the metals. So over here, um, let's think about sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons, right? Sodium would have to gain a whole mass of electrons to become like argon. Argon's what, 18? I'm going to stop looking at that one. It's all faded out. Argon's 18. So sodium would have to gain seven electrons. That's a big change in electrons. That's not going to happen. That's like you know, going on one of those reality TV shows where they give you, you know, construct, facial reconstructive surgery and stuff. I mean, who's going to do that? Occasionally, some people will, but not most people. Sodium's not going to do that. Well, what's an easier way for sodium to get, ten, to get the same electrons I gave it away? Same electrons as a noble gas. It could lose one. If it loses an electron, now it looks like neon. It has the same number of electrons as neon. That train is really loud. If sodium loses an electron, it's got 10 electrons now, 11 protons. What's the charge on it? Plus one. So sodium forms a plus one ion. Lithium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium are brothers of sodium. They're all in the same family. They do the same thing. Magnesium. Magnesium has 12 electrons. If he loses two electrons, he has the same number of electrons as neon. And then he'll have a plus two charge. Right? So, Remembering the charges on these guys is actually easier because the charge is the same as the group number. Group number one, plus one ions. Group number two, plus two ions. Nice? Group number three, plus three. And don't look at those guys. I don't agree with that. So... What happened there? Group? Group 1A, 2A, 3A. The charge equals the group number. For the metals, you can count backward from the noble gases. So this is for metals. Um, for the nonmetals, if you want a more math way, nonmetals, charge equals the group number minus eight. Group number minus eight. And that's where using um, these older, older numbers works better. So here's nitrogen, group number five. If you're using the 15, ignore the, the, the 10 there. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. 6 minus 8 is minus 2. 7 minus 8 is minus 1. 8 minus 8 is 0. And these guys don't form ions. 
Any questions? You can watch me explain it and say, oh, yeah, that's easy. You have to do some practice before it sticks in your head. Okay. End of slideshow.